having some conversations with God. Have you ever sat in your room and had a conversation with God? You know, just kind of dialed up and said, yo, God, we got some things to talk about. Well, I think as a world, as a collective consciousness, we've got quite a bit of conversation to have with the divine. And I want to hear from you and what your conversations with the divine have been and how we can structure our communication in a way that we can co-create and shift our own individual consciousness, our frequency that we send out, and in turn make a difference in the world. But many of our conversations that we have with God are spent sometimes complaining, sometimes feeling like, how did I get myself into this mess, God? And I hope you got a plan to get me out. And then there are those times where we're just in that despair, that conversation that we don't understand how things have happened the way they have. Something unexpected happens. Very often when I talk with different people, they say, I don't feel like God is listening to me, Sarah. They are feeling this despair and this dismay and as if they've been forsaken and that no answer is coming because they find themselves sucked up into a turmoil or a experience that they just can't find their way out of. Perhaps it's a grieving parent who can't quite see how they're ever going to find joy and live their life without their dear child. Or maybe it's you, a loss of a loved one that has you feeling as if it doesn't make sense. How could God let this happen? We've all had our conversations with God. Many of us have begged God, God, I promise if you just get me out of this mess, I'm going to do better. God, I promise if you help me in this financial moment, I'll make better choices. God, I promise if you heal me, I will change my life. You see, we've been conditioned to do so many things in this world, and some of us have felt this desire to do things that we knew were testing fate, but we did them anyhow. Many people have perhaps, you know, been in a situation where they know that they were drinking too much for a period of time in their life, or maybe they kind of crossed some lines of substance abuses and they took that chance, but shall we say lucky or blessed are they that were able to pull themselves back from the turmoil and temptation that is associated with all of the substances that can kind of suck you into this dark abyss of energy. And then we say, wow, God, you saved me. Some of us, even as teenagers, maybe we were out with some friends and Maybe we didn't stop to think that the people driving the car maybe shouldn't have been driving the car. Now looking back as adults, we say, wow, we took some chances. Even sometimes just going on that sled on that hill that your parents told you not to go on because there were too many trees and if you didn't manage your sled well, you were going head first into a tree. And they told you you could be knocked unconscious and tried to scare the life out of you. But did that really work? No, and nobody was looking. Sure enough, there you were with your sled, sliding down the, the wonderful snow at high speed, no less, knowing that you could do turns all around all those trees, landing in the snow at the end of the run and laughing. But would you have been laughing if something had changed if, uh, in the story? Would you have been laughing if life threw you the curveball that you didn't anticipate? And are we laughing now because life has thrown us all a curveball? Quite a few, actually. And I'm sure there are people who just don't understand the devastation, the injustices, don't understand the disease that travels the world, shutting everything down and not allowing us to be the people we thought we were. But nothing's really changed inside of you. It's just how we handle and interpret the external world now. If anything, this is, should have created a much more resilient, connected being of character from within. This has been the conversation with God for a year and a half. God telling you, be still, and us saying, but I don't want to, 
I want to go back to the way it was. And God says, just give us a moment. It'll all right itself. But you need to seek counsel at a higher level. Don't just lose yourself in what you've lost. Be grateful for what you've gained and be grateful for the breath of life. See, some of the conversations we've had, and I know many of you wake up and you shared with me that you wake up and you say, thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this breath of life. Thank you for my children, my family, my health, my career, my financial wellness. Thank you for the food on the table. Many of you do that. But what are your conversations with God when you're in your quiet moment? The moment when no one's looking and all of life that's a stage closes its curtain. What's your conversation like behind closed doors? When the theater of life is emptied and it's just you and God, what are those conversations? You see, those are the conversations that make the difference. Those conversations when you surrender and you truly say, I know not that I know not. So show me, guide me, lead me. Give me the strength to persevere. Give me the wisdom to know beyond my human intellect. Give me the truth, the truth of the reality that's before me and how I can best navigate what I'm living, and then how I can help others on the path. And there are those tears that come, those tears in the moment of surrender when we just can't really do much more. No matter what job we've taken, it didn't end well. No matter what relationship we might have had, it just wasn't the right one. No matter what remedy we tried in our health we're still afflicted with the same maladies in the physical body we still are struggling those are the conversations that we have with god in the times when god has our word attention god knows when you have done all that you can and you can't do it anymore and that's when the human personality wants to give up And at times, the human ego will choose to persevere, but not for the reasons that benefit the human, but for the reasons to prove other people wrong. It's never a reason to do anything. It's a reason to show the world your outside personality. Sometimes many of us have fallen on a path of things we had to do to prove other people wrong, only to take us to places that we realize we never wanted to be. No matter where you are in the journey, complete gratitude and bliss are on your knees right now. God's got the whole world's attention. The world is changing. And everything around us is almost surreal. And we have to ask ourselves, what do we truly value? What friendships do you hold near and dear? What aspects of yourself do you truly love? And what is the meaning of the breath of your life? What have you come to bring to the table? And how are you going to make the shift to the life that you really want to have regardless of the outside circumstances? How are you going to provide for your family, live in joy and peace and not in fear? How are you going to maintain great health? What are you going to do in this time? And then when this all passes, for this too shall pass, how are you going to come out the other side a greater, better, more aligned, filled with love, joy, and harmony individual? How do you become that? And how do you leave your burdens at the door? Never to pick those bags up again. See, some of us, our conversations with God are riddled with past stories of baggage that we've been carrying around and worn almost as a badge of honor, a purple heart for the wounds that we have endured in a life. 
that has been a life of maybe personal injustices, dysfunctional situations, horrendous experiences, even traumatic. And we've learned to use that as our ability to get people to notice and connect with us. But there comes a time when that story no longer defines you for you outgrew it the minute you overcame it. But we carry it around as the conversation piece of look where I've been. But you know, it's written that if you turn around, you'll turn to a pillar of salt. So why is it that we keep going to the past and telling the stories of the past? Positive or negative? Why, why is it that 50 years later, we're still telling the story of when we were 12 years old? What is it that makes experiences that are so conditioning and personality forming that we have to use those stories as part of the new person that we've been evolving into our whole entire life. Our whole life is filled with opportunities to bring about change and to shift to a higher knowing and being, but we keep talking about the past. And we tune out the messages of the future because we are so content with how we either handled the past or what we accomplished in the past that we truly are unable to envision a future different from what we know. And therefore we're caught in a box. We're caught in a cycle. And that's how so many of us got caught off guard during these times. We were so caught up in being the person that we had conditioned ourselves to be that we never really took the time, made the time, to recognize who we are inside and the power that is within. And that regardless of the adversities that come before us, that we have the courage, the wisdom, the truth, the light and the love to survive. We are all powerful beings, abundant and immeasurable. You have a power. But I want to hear if you were to talk to God and have your conversation with God. We know our past conversations. Some of them have been pretty interesting. Some of them could have been a reality television show, our conversations with God. Sometimes I think God puts us on hold and says, okay, well, we're gonna let you figure that out and get back to me. But what are your conversations with God? What have you been saying? And if God were here as one of us, just a stranger on the bus, what would you want God to know? 